Song of Solomon, Part 20. Welcome back. Today we are entering Chapter 6. Now contextually, we are still talking about the post-rapture world. So the first two verses of Chapter 6 pertain to what's going to happen after the rapture. But then after that, the scenario changes. Wait till we come there. So let's read verse 6. The Jews are talking to the Christians who are left behind in response to what they queried from the Jews. Remember, in our foregone episode, I explained how the left behind Christians are looking for Jesus and they can't find and now they are approaching the Jews to ask them, hey, did you see my beloved? And then now, in response to that, the Jews are asking this question. Now, I really don't know whether this verse that we are going to read is a sarcastic one or a genuine one. Let's read it. Whither is thy beloved gone, O thou fairest among women? Whither is thy beloved turned aside, that we may seek him with thee? It could be sarcasm. Remember Elijah on Mount Carmel when the prophets of Baal were trying to draw the attention of Baal. Elijah was actually mocking them sarcastically. You know, he, he was saying, hey, shout louder. Perhaps he is asleep. Perhaps he's gone on a long voyage. Scream, yell, call him. Remember that sarcasm, that cynicism? Perhaps here the Jews are asking the left behind Christians, where has he gone? That beloved of yours. Okay, can we join you in seeking him? Or it could be a genuine response to the query of the left behind Christians. Where, where is he gone? Well, come, let's join, let's help you. We will look for him. We don't know. But the answer is very simple, my dear friends. Can you seek and find Jesus after the rapture? No, because he has taken his church and he has gone. The Holy Spirit has taken the church. He has quickened them. He has transformed them. He has taken his church to the bridegroom, the, the Lord Jesus, who comes halfway and welcomes his bride and takes him to heaven. Anyway, knowing this, the left behind Christians are giving a reply or a response to the Jews in verse 2. My beloved is gone down into his garden. Don't worry about the word down. The Hebrew doesn't have the word down. Okay? Because some people may think going down implies going into the Hades or, you know, below the ground. No, 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 no. Okay? My beloved is gone down into his garden to the beds of spices. This is a figurative expression of heaven to feed in the gardens and to gather lilies. Remember I explained garden denotes the church, the beauty of a garden, remember? And then what about the lilies? I gave a couple of explanations. One, the Lord Jesus himself is the lily of the valley. He descended from heaven and he gives hope okay and also secondly he has transformed the church into becoming lilies just like Jesus okay so now he has gone to feed to gather lilies he has gone to heaven to enjoy his bride in heaven so the left behind church acknowledges that Jesus has gone for good and we have to just leave it at that. Now my dear friends, with verse 2 comes to an end the scenario of the post-rapture world. Verse 3 commences with a new scenario and this is talking about the present situation today. Okay, now although it was futuristic to uh, the time of Song of Solomon, but now we have come to our time. Okay, let's read verse 3. 
the church is saying the bride is saying i am my beloved's and my beloved is mine he feedeth among the lilies let me explain these three things my dear friends number one i am my beloved's hey you may belong to a church a denomination perhaps you love your pastor so much that you say i belong to this pastor's church that's all wonderful but aren't we all one don't we all belong to jesus our bridegroom yes we do now whilst on earth we need to be faithful to our church be a part of a church don't be churchless okay be a part of your local church submit to your local church its rules and regulations its doctrinal standpoints okay submit to your leaders submit to your pastor and if you are a pastor and if you are under a leadership submit to your leadership be faithful to your denomination okay what about the assemblies of god what about the four square gospel church what about the church of god uh, what now here in sri lanka i am part of uh, the fellowship of free churches of sri lanka so let's be faithful to our leaders our denominations okay our churches leaderships but aren't we all one we are all one so don't be so self centered don't think that it's only our denomination that's going to make it no we need to love the other churches other pastors other denominations and accept them also as part of us for we are okay so we all belong in the true sense of the word to our bridegroom who is jesus and my beloved is mine now look there are some christians who claim that they see visions three times a week they undertake tours to heaven twice a month now do i disagree with all those nah. well i have my beliefs i don't believe that people have gone to heaven as yet uh, but but they they may have seen visions of heaven they may have really gone in their spirit to paradise that i believe uh, i don't believe that people may have gone to heaven even in their spirits but they may have seen visions of heaven anyway i am a pentecostal charismatic uh, believer okay so i believe all what we ca- pentecostal charismatics believe but you know what some people make me feel that jesus is more of theirs than mine why because jesus seems to be visiting them quite frequently you know i i i have uh, seen people say jesus woke me up uh, he sat and he had a chat with me it is all wonderful but for those who these things don't happen we may feel that well jesus doesn't really belong to us the way he belongs to them but in actual fact jesus belongs to his church and we are all part of his church wow so he is ours so don't worry about these visions and dreams and these ecstatic claims okay uh, while i don't dismiss them uh, i believe that jesus loves us all equally and we all are the bride of christ and he belongs to us just as we belong to him okay and then it says he feedeth among the lilies now jesus also joins in the eating he just doesn't feed us but he also sits at the table okay he is not just a good host but he is a good friend he loves fellowship he feeds with us remember when he knocks on the door of the church of laodicea in revelation chapter 3 what does he say behold i stand at the door and knock and if any one opens i will come in and do what sup with them and he with me so our jesus loves fellowship 
in the Jewish culture, eating together is fellowship. And today Jesus comes to church to fellowship. We are the church. He comes to fellowship. Now that is why, while on the one hand I agree, as Pentecostals say, uh, come to receive, be blessed, be fed, all that. We have to come to be a blessing also to God. Not only to each other, but also to God. We have to give to God, not just offerings, tithes, not just those, but fellowship. So when we come to church, I don't merely encourage our people to come just to receive, but also to end, to give. Okay, receiving is not just the end, but we have to receive, but we have to give also. So my dear church, when you come to church, come prepared to give. Give what? Give thanks to Jesus. Give praises due unto him. Give worship, which he alone deserves. Okay, so come to have communion with him. Give him yourself. Of course, give to your local church, your offerings, your tithes. Give to ministries. That's all wonderful. But also give God the thanks, praises, worship, and all these things that are due him. Wow, that's all wonderful. So my dear friends, uh, verse 3 these three things are very important that we belong to Jesus and he belongs to us and that he would love to have fellowship and communion. So we need to uh, be hosts to Jesus as well, just as he is our host. Now let me take you to verse 4. I love this verse. Of course I love all the other verses, but let me explain what this verse contains. Okay, Thou art beautiful, O my love, as Tirzah, comely as Jerusalem, terrible as an army with banners. Aha! What are these three things? Of course we know the second and the third, third, don't we? Don't we know Jerusalem? We know. So when it says as comely as Jerusalem, we can get an idea of what he's trying to imply. But wait a minute till I come and give my explanation to it, okay? To add to whatever you have in your mind. Terrible as an army with banners. Hmm. We can sort of understand. But, but we need more clarification on that. But many people stumble when we read. Thou art beautiful, O my love, as Tirza. What is Tirza? Is it a person, a, a name of a woman, or a flower, or an animal, or a place? What, what, what is Tirza? And it is supposed to be beautiful. Now, if only we know what Tirza is, that we can understand its beauty. Let me explain, my dear friends. It is a place. What sort of a place? A village, yes. A city, of course, yes. A country, aha, uh -huh, yes. Well, it should be one of these, Suresh, you cannot... You, you cannot say it's a village and a city and a country. Friends, today a country needs to be huge in size. Look at the United States of America. Look at Great Britain. Look at other countries. A country should be a country. But in those days, my dear friends, a country, a nation needn't be as large as today's nations. They could be as small as a village and yet a country. Now I come from Kandy in Sri Lanka. Kandy is a city. It is a district uh, and a district capital. But before the English came and conquered Kandy in 1812, Kandy was a kingdom. It was a nation ruled by famous kings. Okay? Now, when we talk about kings, we have different categories, don't we? We have kings who are emperors. Emperor Sennacherib of Assyria. Emperor Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. 
Emperor Alexander the Great of Greece, Emperor Caesars of Rome, the Roman emperors, Julius Caesar, Augustus Caesar, uh, we have uh, Titus the Caesar, the, whose father was Vespasian the Caesar, Nero, Caesar Nero, okay, Caesar Caligula, these were Caesars, these were emperors, okay. Then what about the British Empire? The British monarchs were emperors after the 18th century until the empire crumbled and became, became back into what it is now, okay. Now Queen Elizabeth II, who is the British monarch, she is not an empress, is she? But once upon a time, the British Empire was the empire on which the sun never set. So we have monarchs, we have kings and queens who were emperors and empresses. Then we have great kings, king of kings type. You know, who would be a senior king under who? There will be vassal kings. Then we have regular kings who are kings of each nation. Now, when God brought the people of Israel out of Egypt and brought into the land flowing with milk and honey, yes, it was a relatively small area of land, around 15 to 20,000 square kilometers but it had many nations. 64 countries in total, 31 of which were huge enough to be called nations under kings, starting with Jericho. Remember, the first country the people of Israel had to conquer was Jericho. Okay? But it was small enough for people of Israel in their hundreds of thousands to walk around seven times in one day and yet big enough to be fortified with strongholds and be treated as a country. Okay, Jericho. If you read Joshua chapter 12, verse 9 talks about the first two nations, Jericho and Ai, spelt A-I. Go down to verse 24. The 31st king was the king of Tirzah. Aha! Joshua 12, 24 shows us that it was a nation. But eventually, after Joshua and them conquered, it became a city. A beautiful one though. And during the time of the writing of the Song of Solomon, it was just a city. But later on, after Solomon... This was to become the capital of the northern kingdom of ten tribes after the separation of the kingdom into the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom right after King Solomon. So Solomon was prophesying here about Tirzah. Now if you read, if you have time, you can read uh, 1 Kings chapter 16 verses 23 and 24. Omri becomes the king of the northern kingdom and he rules for 12 years, the first 6 years he rules in Tirzah. After that, he moves his capital to Samaria and Samaria becomes the capital of the northern kingdom. This Omri guy he is the father of Ahab, the famous guy or the infamously famous Ahab who, who married Jezebel and brought her in. Okay. So, after Omri, Samaria became the capital of the northern kingdom. But before that it was Tirzah. Now, where is Tirzah located today? Those of you who live in Israel or who visit Israel frequently, it's in Nabulus, which was the biblical Shechem. Okay? If you go to the Greek Orthodox Church where the well of Jacob is, John chapter 4, remember? The Samaritan woman and all. You know, you can go further north into Nabulus and then you will come to Tirzah. Tirzah was a beautiful place. A capital, used to be a nation as I told you earlier. The meaning of the word Tirza means pleasant. Okay? So Tirza uh, was a beautiful, pleasant place surrounded by not very pleasant areas. So here, 
Thou art beautiful, O my love, as Teresa. Aren't we like that today? When God looks at the world, he sees a very evil world full of corruption, idolatry, adultery, homosexuality, uh, abortion, divorce, um, various types of sins, murder, oh, bad place, okay? But he sees his church as pleasant. Tirza. Okay? And look at the next one. Next one, you are comely as Jerusalem. You know, Jerusalem was, was always in the heart of God, long before David made it the capital. Shalem, which was ruled by Melchizedek, was actually Jerusalem, okay? Abraham was told by God to offer Isaac on Mount Moriah. Where? Jerusalem. Then David bought Mount Moriah from the Jebusite king, Arauna. Remember? 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 18 onwards. So, that was Jerusalem. King Solomon built the temple there. Zerubbabel built the second temple there. And the third temple will be built there. Jesus came there on riding the colt. Remember? One week before he was crucified. And he is going to return there according to Zechariah chapter 14. And during the millennium, Jesus is, is going to rule the world from there. So, Jerusalem is in his heart. But it's the Jewish capital. What about people like us who are Gentiles but Christians? If you read the book of Revelation, after the marriage supper of the Lamb in Revelation 19, Jerusalem descends from heaven as the decorated bride. So we are the spiritual Jerusalem. And here it says, we are as comely as Jerusalem. Sweet and wonderful. Also fortified, Jerusalem uh, was fortified. So it's a place of security and safety. But it says terrible as an army with banners. An army carries banners and marches out to attack the enemies. So here are the three things. The church is supposed to be pleasant like Tirza. We are. And as calmly as Jerusalem, fortified, well protected, safe. But that doesn't mean that we are timid. We are fearful. For 2 Timothy 1.7 says, God has not given to us the spirit of fear, but of power. We are powerful. Yes, over the past 2,000 years, we were persecuted, we were chased away, we were oppressed. And yes, even today we are going through tumultuous problems and attacks from the world. Why are we calm? Not because we are afraid, but we turn the other cheek. We are taught to do that. We are taught to be peaceful, but we are bold. Even when Stephen was stoned to death, he preached before he died. Okay? And, and people like Polycarp and Justin Martyr in history, all the way to today's people, Christians who are suffering persecution. We are as bold as an army which is offensive. We are not just defensive, we are offensive and we have the power in the name of Jesus, in the blood of Jesus and we can pull down any stronghold, any demon, you bring any Satan, any demon, any witchcraft, we know to pull those strongholds down and we know to fight against them. Why? Because we have the name of Jesus. We have the blood of Jesus. We have the omnipotent God on our side. He that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. Okay? So we are powerful. And that's verse 4. Yes? We are as pleasant as Teresa. We are as comely as Jerusalem. But when it comes to Satan, his demons, and spiritual warfare, we are terrible as an army with banners. Were you blessed? Chapter 6, the first four verses, lovely, aren't they? See you next time. Have a good one.